I will now introduce our next speaker, architect Thisara Thanapati. Architect Thisara Thanapati established his firm, Thisara Thanapati Architects, in 1997, that has been embracing beauty, well being, and nature. He focuses on the aesthetic experience of special form, delivering sensual delight to emphasize equally the caring for both body and mind through design relaxation, nourishment, and rejuvenation. His designs advance ecologically sensible solutions involving innovative technologies, architectural forms, and urban design. The essence is derived by the three larger detentions of society, culture, and nature. He has won the Geoffrey Bauer Award 2010-11 for Excellence in Architecture for Sarath Abranti House, Jeffrey Bava Award 2016-17 for Excellence in Architecture, the Spa at Santini. Sir, kindly take the dais. like to thank the organizers for inviting me. Uh, this is presentation uh, is uh, one uh, which I did previously also, but I thought uh, this is appropriate for the for the today's theme, right? Uh, humans are said to be rational, sensual, and spiritual beings. Architecture, when it, when it becomes art, it goes beyond rationality and even sensuality and it touches spirituality. I feel it is a spirituality which primarily makes architecture humane and therefore human centric. It is this intangible, mysterious quality in architecture that brings, li that brings life to architecture that I'll be touching upon. So, show the first slide. Next one. Yeah. Architecture cannot be fully explained. It has to be experienced. Uh, actually, architecture has to go beyond the logical, theoretical explanations for it to become humane. It has to be sensual and a spiritual experience. Next one. Uh, truth cannot be written down. The moment you write it down, it is no more the truth. The words are symbols and they are constructs of the mind. The truth is realized, it is said to be realized in a non-verbal and non-conceptual level. The next story. Architecture at its highest level becomes art. Yeah, I feel uh, architecture truly becomes human centric only when it is at the level of art. The next. next. All great art evokes an experience of silence. The silence of art is not mere absence of sound and noise, but a reminder of an ontological and independent condition, an observing, listening, and knowing silence, a silence that awakens mental and sensory awareness. Great architecture can also create silence and connect us with the benevolent tranquility of the universe. Now that is, I have uh, got that quotation from Johanni Palasma's, one of his books. Uh, so what, it, what, this, what he's trying to explain is, uh, the spirituality, actually to my understanding, spirituality is the detached awareness of your sensory and mental mechanism. 
so this is said to be the most blissful experience humans can have the next architectural experience is a multi sensory and pre conceptual it's a bodily engagement actually the the you know the rhythmic uh, movement through space and the, what you call the kinetic and uh, the tactile experience are also also important it's not just visual next yeah now in this space uh, you can see the way you move the textures of the uh, surfaces and the shade and the scale of the the space all makes up the experience next and this is again a you know a space where it gives a sort of multi sensory feel the next one here of course the water the coolness of water and the shade of the trees maybe the rustling of the leaves all that makes up the total experience the next that again a space where you know you get sort of multi sensory experience with the textures of the walls and all that next here again you know it is is a kind of space where you have rough walls and light and shade and the, the you have to carefully descend down the you know come down the 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 steps so that it it it's sort of multi sensory experience again now art is born born in an egoless mind when you are one with that you are free from your ego you are in an effortless flow a state of spirituality so uh, you know this actually uh, now the, the 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 now here in a now she is uh, performing an act you know so what it says is now it's not the physical target that is important it is a spiritual you know the experience of spirituality is the 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 uh the the important thing you know it actually you re, you experience a spirituality when you when you become one with that you know when, when whatever that you do when it becomes when you come to the perfection of that act you know you 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 are released from the 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 burden of that you know so next next Okay, right. Yeah, that again a space which explains sort of the kind of spirituality. The next one. So, uh, let's see. the primordial essence of color is a series of strange images seen as if in a dream, when thought, concept. formulation touch upon color th the spell is broken we hold in our hands a corpse uh, jonathan eaton is a person who was a member of uh, the bauhaus uh, school and he has done lot of research on color so what he says is uh, you know when, when you are too attached with concepts and you know the theoretical conceptualization uh, you know the, the work that you do loses the the life uh, and the human touch in it the human essence is lost actually yeah i have seen this uh, you know written on church facades you know uh, what i think is uh, you know uh that you know you have to kill your ego uh, for for resurrection to happen you know uh so it's about uh, getting detached from your thought process uh, okay next one so according to the buddhist thought also actually man is considered to be a mere dead body until he achieves the preconceptual awareness the next 
this is a quotation I've taken from uh, uh, Christoph Alexander's uh, the, the Phenom Meaning of Life, the book he has written. Uh, he says, uh, uh, so he tries to explain the quality of life in uh, you know the, the buildings and certain situ and other uh, situations. He, he like uh, one example he takes to explain this is a comparison between a Bangkok shanty and an architect design postmodern house. According to him, Bangkok shanty has more life than the postmodern house. Postmodern house is is a product of ego. Bangkok shanty is a simple, direct, and spontaneous reaction to the situation. Though it is de devoid of creature comforts of the modern society, it has a life found in any other art, uh, authentic work of art. So, uh, actually, in all uh, vernacular architecture, uh, yeah, you get uh, this. This applies to the old vernacular architecture. You know, this you get this. Uh, Human touch in vernacular. Uh, vernacular architecture is, is actually a natural, spontaneous reaction to a situation, to a problem. So there are no strong theories or styles developed by the ego. Vernacular always embraces the human essence. So these are some of the pictures, uh, actually this one was uh, uh, I have taken from the Christoph Alexander's book, you know, he is he, trying to uh, explain the, uh, the quality of life in uh, various situations, right, yeah, the next one, yeah, yeah, next. So now here you can see the simple edge and uh, you know the the way the setting has uh, you know uh, the, the they are actually really relaxed and they, they, they are one with uh, themselves. Right. Yeah, the next. Now these are some of the buildings uh, of the, the modern, uh, like uh, today's. Uh, the, 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 these are actually products of the consumerist culture, the mo modern uh, deconstruction, uh, the style of deconstruction. So all the areas of communication and artistic expression, our current consumerist culture tends to favor quick, forceful, noisy and emotionally overwhelming experiences. A commercially oriented image effect a sort of image shock has gained popularity in the competition for, for the attention of the over overstimulated co consumers. As a sequence in today's society of spectacle, architecture is increasingly a product of sens sens sensationalism. The next. So this is again a sort of very consumerist, you know, a uh, uh, modern building. The next. next. Yeah. The next. All right. The next. So I'll show you some of my works as well. Uh, the next one. Uh, you know, our uh, suburban areas are getting. Uh, Subdivided, subdivided into small uh, plots of lands, and uh, the, the so there, there's no greenery left in these suburban areas anymore because of the fact that you know the the the, the, uh, the middle class clients have a certain requirements. So once you try to put them into a small plot, you can't have a a, a fairly large garden in a plot. So what we did was actually uh, we developed a split level arrangement where you can have all your requirements and as well as fairly large uh, garden so that if you take a large area the 
percentage of the greenery becomes more than a typical suburban uh, neighbor, neighborhood, right? Uh, uh, next. So this is actually an urban house where the garden is actually a courtyard. It, it's, we had to do, do an introverted house to get the privacy into the house because it is a congested area actually, right? But in uh, suburbs, we do gardens, uh, we take the garden outside so that you can even have a big tree in the garden. Right, that's, the, that's how the split level works. Right, uh, you have the, the living, yeah, get back to the previous slide. slide. Uh, so the living and one bedroom in, in the ground floor itself and uh, the garage and the service area at a, at a sort of lower level and above the garage and the service area we create the dining and the pantry and the kitchen right so normally in a house you you have all that in the ground level so by doing that you can have a large uh, garden space in the middle like you know as a, right next so that's the staircase of the next one it's a dining uh, looking down to the the garden the next one that's the bedroom next yeah, the next that's the uh, living room looking into the courtyard in the middle the next one. yeah next So this is a holiday home. We, uh, it's a, actually it's located in a large piece of land, 30 acres, of a tea plantation. And uh, next slide, next one. Yeah. So it's actually surrounded by a crescent of mountains on one side. The land actually slopes down towards the mountains and ends in a valley which is a paddy field so uh, can you show the, the previous one the plan yeah so we place the building in such a way so that uh, the mountain crescent is actually on on this side like that and to capture the space uh, the sort of large immense space in between the building and the mountains and uh, created a weaving deck uh, uh, sort of pointing to the paddy field right so it sort of fits into the larger context uh, so this whole building is done out of uh, largely out of recycled materials the timber and steel and which is the building is on pillars and it's a thin long building uh, you know by that by doing that you know you do minimum harm to the the topography to the place right and that's 100 percent cross ventilation uh, yeah the next uh, that's the weaving deck and uh, in the ground floor we have a, a dining area and a, and a kitchen and upper floor we have two bedrooms and two toilets yeah next one yeah, that's what you see as you enter the next that's the view from the upper level uh, upper level there's a small uh, living area in between the two bedrooms next one that's the view from a uh, bedroom yeah. yeah the next that is again the same bedroom Yeah, next one. That's the pantry. Next. Yeah. Next. Uh, this is a resort hotel. Uh, uh, it's situated in uh, Central Hills of Sri Lanka. Uh, and uh, you know, it, it's uh, it's uh, the land is the abandoned tea tea estate, right? So special feature of this uh, the hotel uh, is the, the the spa, right? It it is actually you can go to the 
yeah next one so that's the the overall layout uh, uh, right uh, so this pi is uh, uh, is located in a valley It was designed as a series of uh, green terraces, which uh, sort of descends down to a, a paddy field at the lower level. So it, it merges with the paddy field and the terrain, right? So it, it's yeah, it's in a valley, and you get these terraces across the valley like that, and it slopes down that way, right? Uh, yeah. The, what you see in the up is the the main building of the the, the hotel and the, this is a section taken through the spa Next one. so that's the main building restaurant yeah All right. Right. yeah the next one so that again is the the spa uh, the the restaurant Next, uh, yeah, next one. That is a water therapy area of the spa. So they wanted to actually have the sort of a gloomy effect, uh, kind of uh, to create uh, the feel of, uh, you know, the, as if you are in in the mother's womb, like. Yeah, next one. That's the entrance pavilion of the spa. Uh, yeah, next one. That is again the corridor which leads to the, which gives access to the various spaces like spa and the steam room and all that. Right. Uh, next. That's the the view from the the entrance pavilion to the spa. Next one. There is again a frame view from the the entrance pavilion. All right. Next. The next. Uh, next. Next. Uh, this is a house which we completed recently. It's facing a lake. A uh, small lake. And what we did was to create a courtyard and a garden, uh, actually a series of gardens, one. Uh, that's the front garden, this is how you access. And then you get into a courtyard and from here you see another garden, right? Uh, so what we actually did was try to relate the whole house to the lake by cutting off the the view of the road in the front so when you are in the living room through the terrace stage you don't see that like you don't see the the cluttered the road in front but what you re relate yourself to the lake directly right even from the dining through the the uh, the courtyard you see the the, the lake right so it, it it's has a close uh, relationship with the, the the scenery outside. So that's the section. So that's the road and that's the lake. So when you are here, what you will see is the lake, not the road. Right? There's a terrace garden here, turf garden, and the pool and the rear garden. Yeah, next one. So that's the pool. And uh, yeah, the central court there. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's the living room. All right. And uh, you can see the terrace and how it relates to the lake. The next one. That's a view. Uh, from the terrace, you know, the, the outside terrace and you 
can see the courtyard and and and, and the rear garden at the extreme end. Again, a view of the courtyard. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. That's the interior space. So what I feel is actually now to do architecture you have to do know so many things like you know you have to know the uh, the craft the the structural engineering climatology and various things uh, uh, sociology and political science everything but uh, at the point it becomes really you know art you you have to go beyond that and it has to be a holistic thing you know if if it is a sort of a theoretical and conceptual thing which is which is uh, which comes out of your mind it it, it will have it, it is your ego is actually reflected on the on the in the work but to be to be to architecture to be very subtle and artistic and to capture that you know the this human quality uh, the this sort of mysterious intangible quality it's 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 where it actually really becomes humane and architecture so it, it it's not you know you have to be in the act and let it happen sort of spontaneously and effortlessly and then only the architecture gets this what you call the humane touch into it the spirituality so, so thank you for